Okay, so next up, we're going to be looking at another very important part of Ableton that you'll be using a lot, and it is known as the browser. So if we take our mouse and just move all the way up here till this triangle and click on it, this part opens up right here, and this is known as the browser window. So let's just quickly go to our manual and see in the live concepts right here what the Ableton manual has to say. Live's browser is the place where you interact with your library of musical assets. The core library of sounds that are installed with the program, any additional sounds you've installed via Ableton packs, presets and samples you've saved, your Ableton and third-party devices, and any folders that you've added manually. So let's just break that down real quickly. So like I said, over here in the top left-hand corner, we have the browser. Let's take a look at all of the different sections of what it has to offer. So up here we have what are known as collections, which I'll get into in a second. Then we have categories and places. Those are the three parts that we need to get to know a little better. So let's start off with categories. As you can see, we have sounds, drums, instruments, audio effects, MIDI effects, Max for Live if you have Ableton Live Suite, plugins, clips, and samples. I personally don't use all of these, so let me just quickly show you how to switch them off. If you go up here into the right-hand corner, you'll see a button appearing. It says Edit. If I click on this, I can switch in and out what I want to use. I personally don't use sounds, clips, or samples. So let me just click on done right there. Now, once I click on drums, it opens up the drum rack and then all of these different drum kits that you can load in that are preset drum kits. And if you want to listen to any of these things, if you look down here in the bottom right-hand corner of the browser, you'll see this tiny little headphone icon. If I click on it, you can see it starts playing a loop of whatever it is I click on. And that way I can get a pretty good rough idea at least of what sounds are in each of these kits but it also works with other presets. So let's just go on this right here, instruments, and let's go into simpler for instance and ambient evolving. You can see it gives us a little version of the preset that we can at least get a rough idea of what it is we might be loading it onto our track. So yeah, let's uh, take a look at this a little deeper. Instruments, here we have analog, collision, and so on and so forth, all the way down to wavetable. Now this really depends on what version of Ableton Live you have. I have Ableton Live Suite, so I have access to everything Ableton has to offer. But depending on if you have the light version or the standard version, certain items won't be visible to you or accessible. Now, if we take the simpler, for instance, which I know is part of all three versions of Ableton Live, if I click on this little triangle next to simpler, it opens up the different presets and they're um, organized differently for each instrument, but typically we have, you know, pads and leads and strings and piano sounds. And if I then click on the little triangle next to that, it opens up presets. And like I said, if you just click on those with the little blue button with the headphones in it on, you can access what these sound like before you actually end up using the sounds. And say, for instance, I want to use one of these sounds. All I have to do is just double click on it and Ableton has now created another track, a MIDI track, which I'll get into a little later. And uh, here we now have our sound loaded in. So let me just get rid of that for now. We'll be doing a lot of this later on, so don't worry about that. So let's take a look at what else we have. So this is all of the instruments that Ableton has to offer internally. Then we also have the audio effects. These are all Ableton audio effects. Depending on which version of Ableton you have, there will be different things accessible here. I have everything, again, because I own Ableton Suite. And I, I have to say, I really do enjoy working with the Ableton plugins. I think they're great. Then we have MIDI effects, which are also very, very interesting. I didn't even know what MIDI effects were until I started using Ableton Live. Then this is Max for Live which is a programming language that is embedded within Ableton Live Suite. We won't be covering this um, at all throughout this course. That's a whole course for itself. And then over here, we have the plugins, which are third-party plugins. 
So if I just click on this, for example, you'll see I have stuff from Apple, Arturia, Isotope, Native Instruments, and so on and so forth. This is how I can access them. Just the same by clicking on these little triangles and then, um, you know, going in and dragging this sort of stuff onto the tracks. All right, so now let's go back up to Collections because this is a, a relatively new feature and this really lets you organize your browser and customize how you organize it. So again, if you go over here to the top right-hand corner and click on Edit, you'll see you have a bunch of colors accessible to you. Uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and gray. As you can see, I've renamed red to favorites and here I have a couple of uh, the plugins or presets that I use a lot at the moment and if I click on done again you'll see all of the colors disappear because I haven't added them so let's just add orange for now and close it you can see orange is now accessible too what you can end up doing is you can go into the presets for instance just to kind of get to know what you have loaded into Ableton already. If you go through these and sound check the presets, for instance, I might be like, oh, I really like this sound. You know, if you go through all of the sounds, you're going to end up forgetting which ones you liked. So you might want to go in, right click on this and click on orange. And now you'll see there's a little orange color next to this Acoustic Australia kit. And if I click on orange over here, it has now been added to this particular tag. And I can rename this by right-clicking on orange, click rename, and I will rename this interesting sounds, for instance. So I can then go through all of my presets and just start organizing the sounds that I potentially want to use on my tracks. So like I said, if I go over here now, I've got a couple of things in there and I can just continuously add to this and just start building up my own little private custom set of sounds. I might want to do the same thing with effects. So I might click on yellow and then right click on yellow and rename this interest, interesting effects. And then let me just close it up again by clicking on done. And then I'll go to audio effects. And then I, I can try out different audio effects. And then right click on interesting effects. And now that has been added to this. So I've got, I've got two different tags now. I've got sounds and I've got effects. So that's just one way of organizing stuff. You might have uh, one for samples. You might have one for combinations. There's uh, so many things you can do. Uh, just let your imagination run through and do whatever it is you want. So now we've covered categories and collections. And last but not least, we have places. And in places, you've got one thing that's really important, which are the Ableton packs. What you see right here are the ones that are installed from here down to here. And then just below that, you'll see it says 29 available packs. If I just click on that, these are uh, packs that I have not yet installed. And I can go on it and I can right click on this, for instance, and go learn about this pack on Ableton.com. And if I click on this, it now opens up my browser and it will open up this particular sound pack. And I can, you know, listen in and see what it has to offer with these uh, sound demonstrations and also just read a bit about it. And I could download it here. But like I said, you can just go right in here and click on this arrow and start downloading it. As you can see, it's just gonna start downloading right now. Let me just stop that. And again, whilst you're in here, you can also go in, for instance, let me just go into these drum sounds and I could right click on this and click on interesting sounds and then it would show up right here. Then you have your user library, which is where you'll save different presets or samples and grooves, as you can see, clips right here. The current project that you're working on, um, everything that is included in your live set that is open at the moment. And then I have uh, various folders here and you can just click on add folder and then go into your hard drive and find folders with samples in them, for instance, or maybe MIDI files, whatever it is you want. And you can just add them into uh, the places right here and you know have a bunch of folders that you want to access quickly. And that's really it, that's the browser for you.